Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my talk from zero to publishing PowerShell API clients in PowerShell Gallery within minutes. My name is uh, William Zhang. Today I'm going to talk about just two things. What exactly is Open API Generator? And how can we use it to generate PowerShell modules? A little bit background on myself. Um, I'm the core team and the founding member of uh, Open API Generator. And I also published some ebooks on how to do scope generations for RESTful APIs. I've been speaking uh, in a number of conferences. Um, I'm also a founder of a startup called westunited.com. Before that, I was with Morgan Stanley for several years. So you can find my GitHub and Twitter handle, wing328. So what is Open API Generator? It is as simple as a process that takes uh, Open API specification as the input and then uh, generate something useful for you, such as API clients, uh, server cycle, documentations, and more. Let's start with the left-hand side, uh, the input. Uh, it takes the Open API specifications as the input, uh, which was formerly, formerly known as the Swagger. We support from uh, version 1.2 up to uh, 3.0. Uh, for the latest version of Open API 3.1, we does not fully support it yet. And uh, to give an idea of what the specification looks like, and here is the pastor in YAML format. We can also use the JSON as well. Uh, so for this example, we have the uh, server. Uh, URL, which is the uh, URL for the REST API endpoints. We also have the description of this API, the license, the versions. And we will scroll down a little bit. And we also have this uh, endpoint description. For example, this one is the endpoint for adding a new pad to the store. And as you can see, it has defined the response, uh, what the response looks like, uh, whether it has any security requirement, and also the uh, request body, which is the uh, uh, the payload of the HTTP uh, request, so which is a uh, request body pad. So if we take a look at this one, here is the full definition. So it supports uh, uh, different payloads in uh, the form of JSON or XML. If we want to take a look at the definition of payload itself, we need to go to the schema section. If we scroll down a little bit, so this is the uh, definition of pad. As you can see, it has uh, several properties. Uh, and uh, some properties are actually required, such as name and photo URLs. And uh, so this is how you describe the payload. If you want to look at the official definition of the specification, you can go to the GitHub page. And uh, you can take a look at the definitions. For example, this one is the latest one that they just released, I think, several weeks ago. Uh, you can click on it. It will show you the full definitions of, uh, for example, schema, different objects, different sections that we just uh, cover. For example, the uh, the the path objects. Uh, what is what is how is the path defined? Uh, so if you want to look into this, uh, definitely take a look at this uh, official uh, website. So how can you actually use the Open API generator in your in your machine? Uh, one way is to actually integrate the uh, Open API generator as a Java package uh, into your Java project directly. Another way is using the Open API CLI, uh, which is like a command line tool uh, that I will just uh, show that I will show you later as part of the demo. If you are using uh, a Mac, then uh, you will find it easier to do a just pull install Open API generator. So this is the homebrew formula. You can just copy this and uh, and run this uh, locally in your machine. And you can also, if you do not want to install anything, uh, Java dependency into your machine, you can simply just uh, make a uh, REST API call to our online generator. And in our projects uh, with me, you can find a section to talk about the uh, online generator. So there's the online sections. And uh, so we have uh, two uh, endpoints 
mainly one is this latest stable versions another one is the latest master so whenever we push something to the master so this will get rebuilt and then we'll just uh, host it in uh, open api dash latest dash master and uh, to let's say you want to generate a ruby api client for the pest store api all you need to do is basically to submit a http uh, request so this one is submitting a request to a local uh, locally hosted uh, server you can change this to the URL above uh, to send it to the uh, uh, API server host publicly and uh, so this will uh, trigger the server to generate a web API client and then you can just download the uh, zip file unzip it and you'll have a web API, web API client uh, ready to use And you can also use Docker image if you really uh, you 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 are really into uh, Docker. Uh, you go to our Docker Hub page. Uh, so this is the Docker image for the uh, Open API generator CLI. Uh, you can find the usage just one command, I think one single line to start generating uh, code for your API. So we have got a lot of users using it. I think we have uh, more than uh, 5 million download already. And uh, recently we add support for uh, the uh, ARM-based uh, architecture as well. So ARM64. So if you are using the latest uh, MacBook, you may want to give this a try as well. As a number of users has confirmed this works fine uh, for them. And uh, npm package wrapper. If you, have, if you have npm install, you can just use the npm to do the installations for you. This is, I think, the one of the most popular method. So if you go to npmjs.com, if you search for this thing called Open API Tools in one word, then you will find it right away. So this is the page. Uh, we have uh, we have more than uh, 120,000 weekly downloads. And the good thing about this version is that it comes with uh, something called a version manager that you can just uh, set a version to a particular stable release so you can roll back very easily uh, in case you find that you do not like the latest version somehow, right? So just, just one single line to install and then you can start just uh, generating the, uh, the client. We also have a number of plugins available, Maven, Gradle, Basel. Uh, so if you go to our official documentation page, uh, so we have the Maven plugins, Gradle plugins, and also for uh, there's a plugin for Basel as well. If you're using, uh, for example, an IDE, Eclipse, Visual Studio, or Visual Studio Code, then we have got a bunch of uh, plugins uh, uh, available for different IDE, Eclipse, InternetJ, and uh, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code as well. So you can directly generate code right from your IDE. So these are all contributed by the awesome uh, community. Uh, if you are looking for a uh, pub in a particular ID and you cannot find it, please feel free to open any issues. And of course, we welcome com contributions to uh, to add a new pub in. Once you have the Open API uh, generator ready in your machine, you can start uh, doing some code generation. So for the output, we support uh, uh, a variety of things such as uh, API clients, uh, so as I framework, and more. And the best way to find out what the latest web we, that we support is to go to the, uh, the uh, projects with me. Uh, and if you scroll down a little bit, so here you can find below the sponsor sections, and we have uh, all the language that we support. For API clients, we support many programming languages. Pretty much all the popular ones are covered, such as C Sharp, C++, Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, and many more. And for some uh, generators, such as Java client generators, we support different HTTP libraries as well, such as Jazzy, OKHttp, VisualFit, WebCC, and more. The latest one that we ask is the crystal kind generator. 
which is a pop uh, programming language that has been gaining some popularity these days. Please give it a try if you are programming in Crystal and you want to make some uh, API calls. And for server-side framework, we also support quite a few, uh, such as those popular ones, C Sharp, ASP.NET Core, uh, Java Spring, uh, Python Fast, uh, Ruby on Rails, as well as uh, a, web, a web server. There's also a new one coming up for Go. Uh, so we already support Go uh, with HTTP or using the Go Gene framework. There's another one using uh, it's called the Go Echo framework that uh, that this uh, users try to contribute. So we'll review this soon and hopefully add it uh, to the upcoming release 5.1.1. We can also use Open API Generator to generate API documentations. Uh, we support a uh, number of uh, popular formats, HTML, uh, SQDoc, Markdown, and more. You can also convert your Open API uh, documentations into uh, Apache 2 web config file. If you want to migrate your uh, REST API to something else, such as uh, GraphQL or Proto Buffer, we also allow you to easily do that to convert your input into these uh, various formats. Time for demo. First, we'll generate a PowerShell module for Pesto API. Uh, as you can see, this is the specification for the Pesto API. Uh, it contains uh, some endpoints, for example, for adding a new pet to the store. Uh, you want to update it, or maybe you want to you want to search for it, and then you can try to uh, do a get to 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 get back the pad you just add. All right. So there are a couple of endpoints, and also there are some uh, there are some models that we have defined. Right. Tags here. We have the pad objects, which has several properties: ID, name, something like that. And then we will try to customize the output, such as the uh, for example the PowerShell module name. After that, we'll make some API calls to make sure it works uh, as expected. And then we'll add integration tests so that uh, we will have the integration test running every time we make a change in, uh, in the CI. And then finally, we will publish the modules to uh, PowerShell Gallery, uh, which is like the app store for PowerShell. You can uh, install uh, various uh, PowerShell modules. You can publish your own modules as well. To generate PowerShell module for the Pesto API, we simply need the specification as well as the Open API Generator command line tool. As you can see, SG specifies the generator name, uh, in this case it's PowerShell, and dash i specifies the location of the uh, Open API specification. In this case, it's an URL. You can also specify a file locally uh, in your hard drive. That show specify the location of the output folder. In this case, we are going to put in the current folder and we are going to create a folder called demo and put everything inside. As you can see, I'm using PowerShell 6.2.4. To check which version of Open API Generator that I'm using, I simply need to supply the version to the command line and I'm using 5.1.0. To list out all the generators support in this version, I can simply type list and it will show me all the support uh, generators such as the documentation generators. To generate the uh, PowerShell module, we're going to simply just run the command. As you can see, it's showing us a lot of things, but let's go up a little bit. So it's trying to show some uh, useful information during the cook generation. For example, oh, it's the, uh, the status of a PowerShell generator. And then uh, some uh, information or warning. So we found multiple schema defined in content. And uh, we also have some hints on, OK, you can use some thing called environment variable to try to propose us the file, to try to uh, reformat the file or add something to the file. 
and also it show you some information about the uh, the inline objects. As you can see, this uh, some test files, category tests, and also uh, some markdown file for documentations. So it seems like just one command, we have everything everything that we need. Let's take a look at the auto generated power cell modules. We will first uh, change the direction to demo, and then let's show what we have. We have uh, something called build ps one that we'll use shortly to install the modules. We also have auto generated readme file as well as an auto-generated uh, uh, config file for continuous integrations and there are several folders, docs, which stores the uh, documentations, the source files as well as some auto-generated test files. Let's take a look at the auto-generated readme to, uh, to start with. So we have the readme here and we are going to use Chrome to, uh, to, to open it. As you can see, it shows the default uh, readme and it shows you the basic information and what is the frameworks that we support uh, and for the installations and uh, we have uh, how, how to build it locally, how to just run this command, right? We can just build it and to uninstall it, we just want to remove modules uh, or command it to do it. And for tests, we are going to use something called Pester that I think most uh, PowerShell developers are familiar with. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can find documentation for the API endpoints as well. Right? So we have different endpoints right, for adding new pad to the store, for updating an exi existing pad, for obtaining a pad. Uh, so we have all these uh, documentations auto-generated with just one single command. We also have documentation for modules. right? and also uh, whether certain endpoints require authorization. If, uh, if it does, uh, what are the required authorization? So let's take a look at some uh, documentation for the endpoints. For example, this one, get pet by ID. So you take a look at this one, uh, get pet by ID. So we have the uh, uh, all the example code right here, right? If you want to use configurations, and you can specify pet ID, which is the only parameter available, and then you can just run it, as simple as that. And then there are some sort of exception controls you can do as well. Looks pretty uh, straightforward to me. By looking at the readme, the default looks uh, pretty good to start with, but clearly there's something we can uh, do better, such as, for example, the name of the PowerShell modules, maybe the SDK versions. Uh, so how can we customize the output based on our requirement? First, we will show you how we can list all the generator options so that you can customize the output uh, more easily. And then uh, we'll show you uh, various ways to customize, for example, the campaigns, stuff like that, to give you complete control of the output. To get a list of options, we simply run this command uh, using config-help by specifying the generator name using dash g as usual. So you put it here. As you can see, it's showing a lot of options that we can use to customize the PowerShell output. Starting from the first one, for example, we have the API name prefix, which will be appended to all the PS objects. By default, it's, it's an empty string. Uh, if we if we specify something like ps, pad will become just ps pad. For common verbs, uh, these are the common verbs that you can manipulate in PowerShell. For example, if you want to map delete to remove, patch to update, so that you have complete control of the naming of the command shell, uh, PowerShell command app, then you can use these particular options, common verbs, to do so. Let's go down a little bit. So these are the options that we need. For example, the package name. By default, it's called PS Open API Tools. We can name it as something else, right? Because this looks pretty generic. We can also customize the package version. Right? By default, it's 0 0.1.2. We can change it to something like 1.0.4 or anything that, that you want to uh, specify here. 
the command to supply all these options is also very straightforward. Uh, in addition of what we have provided previously, uh, we are going to put it in a folder called demo2 instead, and uh, we can use some additional properties. And then we just apply this uh, option name and the value. Uh, for package name, we are going to use ps pastor demo. For the package version, we are going to seal, we are going to use 0.3.4. So let's run this command and see what we'll get. So as you can see, it's already putting all the files in the right folder, ps pastor demo. And if we look at the auto auto generated readme file, so it's already showing uh, the ps pastor demo as the PowerShell name, and also for the SDK version, it's using 0.3.4 instead of the default, which is 0.1.2. So it looks like we can already customize the output a little bit by easily just using the options. In addition to using additional properties. We can also use a JSON file uh, to, to, uh, to specify all these uh, uh, options. So let's take this and we are going to create something called config.json. So we will need to uh, provide this uh, into JSON file right? using the key value pair format. So this is the uh, the first one is a package name, and then we have the package version as well. So this is the uh, JSON file that specify the uh, options that we want to customize. Very straightforward. The key is the option name. The value is uh, what we want to customize, right? So let's use this, and uh, we will use. Uh, so in addition, so instead of using this, we will use. Uh, the output here, and we'll put it in something called demo free, and then we'll use the test c command to specify the config file instead of using additional properties. As you can see, it's already putting the file in the Y folder ps pastor demo. Let's take a look at the uh, readme as well. As expected, the readme is also showing correctly the PowerShell module name is ps pastor demo. And the SDK version is 0.3.4. In addition to the options to customize the PowerShell output, you can also customize the templates directly. Let's say you want to add something at the top of the readme, you can simply customize the master's template of a readme file. Master's template is what we call a logic-less uh, templating engine. It's something very popular, it's available in many, many different languages, and also is something very straightforward to use. Let's have a quick look at the menu. As you can see, so this is uh, what we usually find in template. So we have the uh, variable uh, in uh, double curly brackets, and we also have a pound sign to indicate whether it is a true or false value. So if we are given the following input, then we will get something like this. At the end, because uh, so in C A is something true, right? So we will just output this, and then you just uh, substitute this all these uh, variables into the corresponding values in the template. It's very straightforward. So in the project itself, right? You will go to the our uh, GitHub projects, right? Uh, you will find that we have all the projects templates available under the module folders. So here, as you can see, we have modules, open API generator, source main, resources. Here you can see many folders. Uh, we have the templates uh, grouped together under uh, under generator name, per generator. Uh, so for this case, we are looking for the PowerShell templates. So here, click on PowerShell. As you can see, you can find all these templates. For example, build.ps1, the readme file that we just mentioned. Right, so you can customize all these templates in whatever way you want to meet your unique requirement. Without further ado, let's give it a try. Right, so what we'll do is to try to clone this project first. It will take some time because the project is pretty large. And then we'll just uh, copy the template folder that we just mentioned into a local folder. Right, And then we'll just use the dash T to specify the location of the, uh, of the uh, templates. That we are going to use. So git clone. So we have already done that already. 
Uh, so as you can see, we already have the Open API Generator folder. So what we'll do is to copy this into a uh, new folder called Custom Tempeh. You will take a look at the Custom Tempeh folder. As you can see, these are all the files that we just show uh, in the in the in the web page right here. Right, it's the exact same files, and now we can just simply just uh, customize this uh, file. So let's say we want to customize the readme and we want to put something at the very top saying, for example, this is for demo purpose only, right? And then we just save it. And with that, we can just run the command to uh, generate using the uh, customized template right here. So let's take a look at the readme file in demo4. As you can see, the first line is what we have just added to the template. This is for demo purpose only. So with this method, you can customize uh, whatever you want. And if you look at the folder that we just have, right, the, uh, the, the, with containing the customized template, it contains many, many uh, templates. And in this case, we only customize just one, readme.tempe. So to make it easier to maintain, so we can just keep this one single file, we meet up, watch that, and we can just delete the rest. Because if uh, if Open API generator cannot find these files in the uh, uh, customized template folder, it will use the default that comes with uh, the generator, which is the one that we just show you, right? So we'll what we'll do is to delete all this file except with me dot watch that. So let's. Uh, Let's open this. So what we'll do is to remove uh, everything except with me dot much that. So we'll delete this. We'll also delete this. Right. So let's give it another try. And this time we'll put it in something called demo 5, right? So let's take a look at the uh, with me file. Make sure it still has uh, all those custom customizations that we add. So as you can see, right, it's right there. This is for demo purpose only, right? Even though we delete the rest of the template, so this will make it easier to help you to maintain and keep your project up to date with the latest enhancement to uh, to all those templates that you do not need to maintain, right? In this case, you only need to maintain the readme uh, with the customization that you want. As simple as that. After you have successfully customized the output to meet your requirement, it's time to install it and try to make some API calls. So we are going to generate the uh, PowerShell modules into demo 6 folder and using the same customization we have done before. If you go to this demo 6 folder and then you will try to look at the readme. Right, so now we have the readme for this new modules in demo 6. And uh, so if you walk through the installations, it's very simple. We just want build.ps and then we want this one import module names. As you can see, it's uh, showing you it's importing a lot of functions. For example, get pet by ID, get user by name, right? So you know clearly uh, what mod what functions uh, actually uh, comes with these uh, modules. If you want to avoid the function name collisions, where right, you have some other modules that already take the same name or similar name, you can use something called dash prefix when doing a input module. So simply specify the prefix at the end. As simple as that. And to uninstall the module, you can simply use the remove modules command. So let's give it a try. So this will remove the uh, PS Pestor demo version 0.3.4 from your system. And to continue this demo, we are going to just uh, re import it. So for testing, we are going to use something called Pestor. So if we copy this command, we use Import. 
and then now we just run it and then it will just run through all the auto-generated tests for modules as well as for the API. Let's take a look at the uh, pet API test to see what the file looks like. So you look at this, all these tests are actually common now. So this auto-generated test file just make it easier for you to start getting tests uh, so that you can make sure there's some sort of testing to ensure your module is working as expected. Uh, so you can just comment this out and then uh, just do the free in the banks and uh, provide the correct value. And you will look at uh, below we have the documentation. So we are going to pay with basically two methods. One is add pad. Uh, the other one is uh, the get pad by ID. You will look at add pad. AppPad is actually pretty straightforward. So AppPad just take one object, which is a pad, a PS object. So we'll in this example we initialize it with uh, just just one long line, right? To make sure that the the objects needs to be added to the pad store is available. So we can just copy this one, right? And then we just put it here. And we can maybe modify the pet ID so we can put it something called maybe we change to one two three four five right instead. And then for the uh, uh, for the for the name, we are going to use uh, just we just call it the P P S demo right. So now we have created this thing called pet right. And then we can just uh, just put it there and just add it. So as you can see, this and success this this and successfully add the pad to the server. So to confirm, right, we can call the get pad by ID command. It. So the command is simply just take one input, which is the ID. So if we take a look at this and we use the ID that we just for Y, one, two, three, four, five, we press enter. And this get back what we just provide, right? The name is PS demo, and all these values is what we provide right here. So it's very straightforward. So from generating the SDK to actually making a function call, it's just as simple as just uh, several commands, right? You can then when it, uh, talk to the server, right, pair with the server by adding some objects, submitting some data to the server, and then get back those data from the server. Easy, with just one command. So what we'll do next is to uh, update the test file to add some integration tests. The test file is uh, under the test API folder. It's called padapi.test.ps. What we'll do is to add a pad and then get it back from the server and check the values. As simple as that. So now we'll add this file API patch. We will update this one, the app path file. So I think what we will do is uh, so we will uh, copy those uh, co copy those code from the command. So if we go to get add pad, and then so this is the one that we use to add the pad, right? And uh, so for the ID this time, we are going to just use uh, 333, okay, to make it easy. And then this one, the ID is also 333. And then this one, we will say is name test, name test. And uh, this one is uh, this one is the uh, photo VR example test. And for this ID, we are going to use free 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 as well. And then uh, same here, name test. Okay, so after we add the pet, so we can call this. We can call the add pet command to add the pet. Right, and after that, we'll get back the path from the server. Right, so let's uh, call the get path command. So we'll put in something called result. And for the ID, we are going to use uh, free, free, free. Okay, so now we are going to check the result. Right, so if we check the result, 
and if you check the for example the ID it should be uh, 333 right and then if we check the name it should be name test right. so let's test with these two to start with and if we go back to here so it, it, in, in, in the readme uh, so what we need to do is run this right involve pasta let's run it to see how it goes and expect that all tests passed can we check out a red, uh, red test a red alert so if we here we go to uh, this one the id we change it to 334 then we should get an error right when running the test let's see if that's the case ah so now it's complaining it's expecting 334 but we get back 333 right so everything is working as expected and the test that we put in place is able to show us if something goes wrong which is good so let's undo this change all right so now we have this test available we are going to remove this uh, comment as well so now we have add the integration test so the next step is to push this to the uh, to the github repo and then we set up a continuous integration so to push the uh, auto generated powershell modules to your github repository we will need to go to our github repository and then we will need to uh, add a new repository so in the name i'm going to use the ps pastor demo and the description i'm going to just say pastor demo that's it i'm going to make it public and i'm going to not enable any of this so let's create this and uh, so here it contains some instructions on how you can uh, uh, add the first file to it and uh, we are going to use the git init and then we are going to add files and then going to remotely add the punch okay so let's uh, go to our repository and then we type git init okay initializing an empty github repository and then we are going to add all the files right. and then we are going to complete it saying this is the first uh, Let's commit. Okay, so this uh, show us we have add all these files to the repository, and then we will need to add those uh, added origins to point to the remote uh, repository that we just create. So here we are going to copy this command, and then we are going to add it. So after we have add the remote, we can say this git push. So now we have successfully pushed this to the remote. So let's do a refresh here. So now it's, as you can see, we have successfully pushed this module to my GitHub repository. The next thing is to use uh, continuous integrations to make sure all the tests are running fine. We are going to use this one called AppWare. And uh, so it's, it's, it's free for open source projects and if you sign in you will see something like this and then you can add a new project that you want to uh, integrate so this is all the repository owned by me and then i'm going to search for this one ps pastor ps pastor demo that i just created so i'm going to add this so i can either start a new build by building this a new build button so let's pass this so this will check a build job to uh, start running those uh, uh, tests that I add. As you can see, the build is uh, successful. Uh, so the tests are able to execute correctly and the results have been verified. So can we check an alert by actually setting the, the uh, test result? We try to force it, well, we try to set an incorrect result here, right? So it'd be three three six. Alright, so it should fail, right? So if we commit this check up view failure and then we try to push it up. Let's see if we check uh, the uh, build failure correctly. I expected so the CI failed to pass because it's expecting 33 
but in the test we are saying we are expecting something three three six instead. So the uh, the CI is able to cache the issues and report a build failure. So what we'll do is to revert this change because now we have verified. We are going to revert this and then we are going to push the change to the master. So now the CI test result is uh, green again. And we will proceed to the next stage to deploy it to, to publish this module to the PowerShell gallery as part of this CI uh, lifecycle. So you go to PowerShell gallery. Uh, so here you go to the sign in, you go to this page called API keys. And then you list all the keys that you have. So we are going to create a new one. Uh, we call it uh, demo. It will expire in 365 days. And it has the right to push new packages and package versions. For this one, we are going to call it test for demo. And then we will just uh, create this. So now we can use this copy button right here. So you can only do it once, right? You cannot do it do it again. So if later you 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 forgot the key, you need to regenerate. So now we are going to do copy, right? So we are going to this page. We are going to the setting for our projects, and then we'll need to add an environment variable. So now we add a new variable. For the value, we use this one. And for the key, we are going to use something called Nick get API key. Nick get API key. Right, we are going to add this uh, variable. Okay, so project setting has been updated. So that's good. So how do we actually test this? So we will need to a way to check our build and do the publishing, right? So now you go back to our GitHub projects here. There's a way that we can something called create a new release. Okay, so create a new release is something we can do to check our build so as to publish these modules to the PowerShell gallery. And uh, I'm going to say this is the first release uh, for demo only. Okay. And we don't need to select this option because this will be released. So if we do this publish release, it should ideally publish the PowerShell modules as 0 0.034 to the PowerShell gallery. Let's see how that goes. And here, as you can see, it has successfully published the PowerShell module, which is which is good. So now, if we go to the PowerShell gallery. If we I go to uh, for example here many packages, so I have got two published packages. So let's see what 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 is. So this is the new one that I published, right? PS Pesto demo. Okay, as zero downloads, I just published a few seconds ago. If I copy this command and I uh, put this to here, then it should work. It should be able to remotely install the uh, uh, Pesto demo modules from uh, PowerShell Gary. So I'll type yes here. Nice, looks like we have successfully just uh, installed it without issues. In summary, we only need to use one single open API generator command to generate the PowerShell module. Then we push the code to the GitHub repository. After that, we enable AdWare with PowerShell Gary API key. Finally, we cut a new release for the PowerShell module. I have also published an ebook on how to use Open API Generator for PowerShell developers. Simply go to this URL. And in this ebook, you will find more advanced topics such as Open API specification, 2x and 3x if you want to learn more about the specifications, how to upgrade to a newer version of Open API Generator easily as well as some commonly asked questions on how to use Open API Generator. Finally, if you have any question or feedback on Open API Generator, please feel free to drop me an email for this email address. Thanks again for your time for attending this presentation. Have a good day.